Good afternoon readers, this is Tilly here from Tilly Shelf. We are on the Hertegruten coastal boat on the way between Trondheim and Christiansund. So I thought now would be a nice time to read to you a little bit from King Harald's saga, um, a little bit about the Viking boats that King Harald had made. Um, obviously this boat is rather different, but we did see some Viking boats in the Viking Ship Museum in Oslo at the start of our trip, so there are connections. Anyway, I thought this was a nice little section of King Harald's saga. Preparations for war. That winter, King Harald was in residence in Trondheim, and that same winter he had a ship built at Eira. It was much broader than normal warships. It was of the same size and proportions as the Long Serpent, and most carefully built in every detail. Its prow had a dragon's head, and the stern had a dragon's tail, and the bowels were inlaid with gold. It had 35 pairs of rowing benches, with plenty of space between each. It was indeed a magnificent vessel. The king had all the fittings of the ship made with the utmost care, the sails and riggings as well as the anchor and ropes. That winter King Harald sent word south to King Svein in Denmark, challenging him to come north to the Gota River in the, in the spring to meet him in battle, to settle their dispute once and for all and decide which of them should be king of both countries. That winter King Harald raised a full levy throughout Norway, and when spring came, a huge army assembled. He had the big ship launched into the river Nid, and the dragon emblems fitted to it. Then the poet Fjordolf said, I watched the ship, my lady, launch down the river to the ocean, see where the great longship proudly lies at anchor. Above the prow, the dragon rears its glowing head. The bows were bound with gold after the hull was launched. <laughs> King Harold then fitting, fitted out his ship, and when all was ready, he steered it out of the river. His men rode in fine style. In the, words of the po in the words of the poet Theodolf, one Saturday, King Harald hauled down the long deck awnings and Trondheim women proudly watched the ship glide past. The young sea king was steering his new ship down the Nid, while battle-hungry warriors dipped oars into the water. As one King Harald's warriors lift long oars from the ocean, the women folk stand watching, wondering at their sea skill. We shall row, my lady, without tiring, till the black tor till the black tarred oars are broken, or the broad blades lie idle when the trumpets sound for battle. Men will quake with terror before the seventy sea oars are given deserved respite from the labours of the ocean. Norwegian arms are driving this iron-studded dragon down the storm-tossed river like an eagle with wings flapping. Harald, sail Harald sailed south along the coast with his full army of men and ships. As they were making their way east into the Oslo fjord, a fierce storm blew up and the fleet had to scatter for shelter in various havens, in the lee of the outlying islands and inside the fjords. In the words of the poet Theodolf, polished prows of longships hug the wooded coastlines. The, armor lead, the army leader encloses Norway with war vessels. Fighting troops are lying in every creek and skerry. Shield-protected warships shelter in the lee of the land. In the great storm that ranged over them, the big ship needed good anchorage. In the words of the poet Theodolf, the king lashed the swollen sea with his dragon prow. The great ship was heaving against the straining cables. Storms wrenched at the iron anchor with cruel fingers. Raging winds and boulders gnawed at the new cast metal. Excuse me. As soon as the weather was favourable, King Harald sailed with his army east to the Gotha River and, arranged, and arrived there in the evening. In the words of the poet Theodolf, bravely has Harald fulfilled his part of the bargain. Norway's king is spending this night at the kingdom's border. Harald keeps tryst with King Svein at the appointed meeting place, a tryst to please the ravens unless the Danes take fright. I thought that was a lovely descriptive section of the saga. Um, I read this thanks to Sagalong and I'm very glad that I did and it's been really lovely reading something that is set in Norway in such a different time frame. Um, so I hope you enjoyed a little bit of that. Happy reading and I'll speak to you soon.